Sean McVay has come out and said, hey, Matthew Stafford is a... He's a bad motherfucker. He's a bad <laughs> motherfucker. Ask Connor. I don't know if Connor's going to continue to be the McVay impressionist <laughs> sure. on the show or not. But, bro, this dude's a bad mf -er. Now, I don't know with if he said uh, to Albert Breer, mf -er, which, by the way, if he did... I will have to evaluate everything he says going forward. Yeah. Okay? If Albert Breer just shortened the full motherfucker to just mf -er, I would like to hear the delivery. Nonetheless, this dude's a bad mf -er, bro. Whatever people say about him, as good as it can be, he's even better than advertise advertised. It makes sense to him. The guy's ability to see the game, his ability to draw on his experiences, the feel that he has, it's pretty special and unique. And man, his feel for people, his authentic way of connecting with his teammates, his coaches, this guy, it's great being around him. This guy is going to win the Rams. Wow. Fan base back after a lot of hope was there. Beginning of the relationship between Sean McVay and Jared Goff. Jared Goff gets over a $100 million contract. McVay gets locked down as well. The LA Rams are off and running. Then some massive, not just cracked, but shattered relationship happened between McVay and Goff. Not personal, seems to just be football-wise. They both wish the best. Massive trade with Detroit. Numerous first-round picks. Get him out of here. Get me Matthew Stafford. Seems like it's off and running here pretty good. Better than advertised, Matthew Stafford, says Sean McVay, AJ Hawk. Man, so when you read this, I would assume you probably think of Jared Goff right away, don't you? Say, oh, this is he saying that Jared Goff is – He's exactly not this guy. All these great characteristics I'm laying out. See, I think the reason why you and I potentially do well together talking in a lot of my friends, because um, that is how you would look at it. You know, that is, that is how, that is exactly how you would, I looked at it as, I thought this was going to be, and once again, this is this type of situation where I'm going one way and then you had another or whatever. I was about to be like, I thought you were going to say, hey, Matthew Stafford, underappreciated. We talk about it all the time. And then talk yeah. about how good Matthew Stafford is after playing against him and how Aaron said hey, these sidearm throws. Nine in Detroit, he's been doing a lot of the throws that I do, that Patrick Mahomes does for a long, long time. I thought that's where you were headed. But instead, you were like, hey, Jared Goff fucking stinks, huh? Yeah, is, that, geez. is that really what you that. read there? No. Yeah, I was saying, if you were, like, if you're Jared Goff, you have to see this and – like, you no, know, like, oh, man, is he saying, like, I wasn't any of these things? Like, that's what I would think of. But, no, it's a huge – unfortunately for McVay, whatever he says good about Stafford, people are going to think that. They're going to mm -hmm. think, like, oh, what, golf didn't have any of this? And he – golf definitely has some of what he's saying here, but – yeah, McVay is very, very happy with who he has as quarterback right now. I think he's pumped up. And you're right. And by the way, once again, I have to hammer that home. That's why I think it's good that you naturally feel that way normally about most things. I naturally feel the way that I felt because it it is a perspective that everybody potentially has. And I wonder if McVay thought only positively when he was putting it out. I'm a coach up, build up the guy that I have. I'm not even thinking about that. I've moved past it. Hey, we got a game. We got a season. There ain't nothing golf can do. I wonder if he's so far past it that he doesn't, like in his eyes, that was, this is not a, I'm describing, I don't have to bury one to lift another. Yeah. I am describing. He is, yeah, I think so too. I 100% think that he is, that's all he's thinking is, hey, I'm just, I'm talking about my guy who's here in golf. It's not, it, it has nothing to do with this. So, when people say like, "Oh, he's burying Goff," he's in a no-win situation though. Like, yeah, McVay is. It sucks for him because he wants to praise this guy and, and he's talking about all the great things he's done for the team and the culture and all this. But that doesn't. You don't. Hey. He's not saying anything bad about Goff though. All right, so let's. I agree. You don't have to bury one to lift up another. Thank you for representing people that would potentially think that. AJ. <laughs> yeah. I know it's not you. I know it's not you. I know you're just doing it for the show. Hey, good for the show. Hey, boy, AJ. Hey, good for the show. Good hey, work, good, AJ. I know you don't feel like that. Whatever the case, I think I am firm in the party that LA won, and I think it's because. Uh, I watched every Matthew Stafford game, and I say this every time I talk about it yep. because I think it's very genuine and very real. Like, if no Detroit Lions games are sought 
by anybody to watch. No, no. Except for Thanksgiving when you're forced and <laughs> you're with your family and there's nothing else on what we are, NFL football. Here we go. All oh, the Lions again. Yeah, they kind of hold Thanksgiving hostage, actually. Yeah. <laughs> they decided one time way back in the day they're going to do it every single time. Uh, Cowboys as well. You know, the Cowboys at least tried to give us at least something uh, that is at least marketable or whatever. But yeah, here come the Lions. Here we go again. And, and the Detroit Lions fans, it's probably terrible Thanksgivings for them as well. I mean, oh, that's I probably not it. great. Mm -hmm. But I, I have... Aside from just the Thanksgiving games where Matthew Stafford throws for 400, 500 yards and they somehow lose still, which everybody says, well, that's his fault. It's like, okay, uh, I don't know how. That's not the game of football then. The the rest of the season, he's fucking good too. It, it, like, hey, not just on Thanksgiving Day. In the, I, I think that is the biggest thing. I get a chance to watch strictly because of Foxy's mm -hmm. relationship with the team and how nice the Lions have been to us and obviously with MCDC there and everything like that. And I think we had a, a small connection with Stafford as well. What he's unfucking believable. And and I think McVay knows that obviously. He sent like 17 first rounders to go get him. <laughs> but I, I think now that McVay has a little bit of film that he can just like, oh my God, we're gonna be able to do this, this, and this. And then in the room, he the way the questions or whatever, he said from his experiences in the past, so he's probably like, hey, when this happens, we gotta try this maybe. It's like, I assume that's what McVeigh wanted out of Goff. And I don't know if Goff's that type of guy. And Stafford is like, hey, this is what we got to do. Let's do this. I love it for Stafford, for his legacy. Yep. And I love it for McVay, to be honest with you. And to be honest, the one that's going to come out on the bottom of all this is the Lions because Stafford's going to ball out and everyone's going to go, what the fuck was Detroit doing for the last decade? Yeah. And I'm actually here for it. I'm very excited for that moment because I love Matthew Stafford. This is like the Pittsburgh Pirates. Guys leave the Pirates and they go play for the Yankees. And they just are uh, all-stars. They're just so good. <laughs> yeah. yep. And everybody's like, why, why don't the Pirates just keep him? Like me. And so, well, the owner stinks or whatever. He, he just he, he doesn't want to do that. He just says, get out of here. You're too good at baseball. That's not what we do around here. But if he goes and has just an electrifying career, like a four or five-year run here where they're in, let's just, let's just say if this happens, Happens. I'm not predicting it. I'm not putting my money on it, but let's just say Which he can definitely play for four or five more years because we know quarterbacks do not get hit that much. Well, anymore. especially with McVay's offense yeah. where it's oh, a yeah. lot more, you know, oh, it's a, yeah. uh, that's a big timing thing. And I mean, that's going to be, yeah, okay, let's say five, six years. What if he makes like three championships? Oh, what if he makes oh. it to two, to a Super Bowl or two? And what if he wins one or two Super Bowls I'll somehow? So I'm not saying he will. I'm not saying he will, but this is something that could happen. And that would be devastating for Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that That's would be... That's worst case scenario, but whatever. Detroit hey, stinks, If he stays Lions healthy, stink. though, but if Stafford stays healthy, he's going to be successful. Oh, I yeah. don't know how successful that is, but he's going to be a hell of a quarterback. He's going to have a great year this next year, and then, I mean, who knows what can happen. So Peyton leaves Indianapolis, mm -hmm. goes to Denver, goes to two Super Bowls, breaks, breaks a bunch of records, wins another one. Devastating. Okay, mm -hmm. absolutely devastating. As a Colts fan, they became Broncos fans, some of them. That was a big conversation piece around the Colts fan base and everything like that. For me as a friend watching them do it, it's like, yeah, uh, Andrew's awesome, I love Andrew, but it wouldn't this have been cool if this was just like two, three years later and we could have figured this whole thing out or whatever. But Peyton won when he was here, you know? Yeah. Right. Winning his decade in the history of the NFL, Got to take. Super Bowl championships, you know, 10 win seasons, like nine, 10 years straight or whatever. And then, so he got to, so you got to experience it. What if he goes from perennial loser mm. to consummate champion, oh. and all it is is just getting out of a potentially cursed franchise? Mm -hmm. That would be devastating for the great people of Detroit. And I want it to happen, Pat. Whoa! Because as a Lions Fox. fan, Matthew Stafford winning a Super Bowl is the closest I potentially will ever get. To win in the Super Bowl. MCO, no, me! Yeah. You oh, are the greatest! You 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 are the greatest! Oh, yeah. Hey, but why do Lions fans don't have to be upset if the Rams play well? We This is what we were talking about. You don't have to tear one down to lift up another one. No, no. I'm talking about what everybody will say. Yeah. It's going to yeah, be week one. Week one, the Rams play the Bears on Sunday night football. Stafford might throw for 500 yards and Whoa, five touchdowns, see. and everyone's going to go. And by the way, what and was lose. going he knows on? knows that defense pretty oh, well. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Don't let